Hey everyone, and welcome to the Fluke Skywatcher Project. I'm back again here to talk about these strange blinking lights and oscillating anomalies, but this time I have an answer to the mystery, and will also provide key points into ways how you can identify these objects too. There were a few subtle inaccuracies I stated in my last video in respect to the exact time and the exact degrees traveled, but with the use of software programs, the inaccuracies were resolved. So if the mystery's been solved, then what are these objects? Well, it has been confirmed at least one of these objects, the one we're watching right now, was positively identified as a geostationary satellite. I will talk a bit about this particular satellite, and then go further into key characteristics in identifying one yourself, if you observe something like this. This geostationary satellite's name is Gorizon 29, also known as Gorizon 41L and Station R R1. Launched into space on November 18, 1993 by the Russians, it was propelled by a Proton-K Block DM-2 rocket, and the satellite was put into geosynchronous orbit at 130 degrees east. Its use was primarily for relaying military and civilian telephone, fax, and telegraph communications, as well as TV and radio signal broadcasts. The satellite has two large collapsible solar arrays, and contains seven different transmission antennas. The Gorizon satellite lifespan ranges from 3 to 10 years, so since it's been out of commission, it has a slight drift due to the stabilization system being inoperable. If you saw my last video, you might remember the slight drift it had. The drifting effect could actually be the result of a variety of reasons, but it would depend on which satellite you're observing. As I stated already, this satellite stabilization system is no longer operable, therefore causing it to drift off course, which I'm sure has occurred with other satellites as well. What also might cause this drifting appearance is, even though geostationary satellites have the same orbital period as that of the Earth, and also remain in a fixed location directly above the Earth's equator, they may not have a perfectly circular orbit. It may have a varying apogee and perigee, or in simplified terms, it may have more of an elliptical shaped orbit. This would naturally give the illusion of it drifting across the sky if you are not standing directly at the Earth's equator. Keep in mind too, the moon plays a role in respect to gravity, tugging and pulling on all of our satellites. So very slight drifts are a common occurrence, and that's why satellites use stabilizers. The light pulsations are caused by the satellite's rotation and reflection of the sun's light. It might be reflecting light off one of the antennas or solar panels. Since the satellite is rotating at a consistent speed, the light oscillations in turn occur at the same rate of rotation as that of the satellite. Remember, geostationary satellites are over 22,000 miles away. That's almost one trip around the entire Earth. So it's pretty awesome we are able to see these objects from such a distance. As far as the flashes that occur instantaneously and only occur one time, it's still hard to confirm exactly what each individual one might be. It's been suggested that this could be caused by a space radiation particle briefly overloading part of the sensor. It could also be other satellites or space junk briefly reflecting the sun's light and just happen to be at the perfect angle for me to see it. I hope this video can clear up any confusion as to what these objects are. We can catalog this one in identified objects and use it for comparison in the future with other similar objects we may observe. Now I'm not saying that every single flashing light in the sky can be explained as a geostationary satellite. However, we now have keen insight on the visual behavior and characteristics of them to make more accurate assumptions when discussing these types of occurrences. I think it's safe to say the other two oscillating anomalies I previously recorded are also geostationary satellites, based on the information gathered. Below I posted some helpful links in the description regarding this topic, so check those out for more information. Well that about wraps it up folks, thanks as always for your support and checking out my videos and if you haven't already feel free to subscribe to my channel for updates and further content. This is Fluke Skywatcher signing off and hope you have a wonderful night.